hello everybody. Um, welcome to, to the last talk of the day. Uh, thanks for joining me. Um, first of all, some words about myself. My name is Clemens. I live in Munich, work there for a small software development company, and we develop software for all different kinds of, of clients and use cases. And I work there as a security engineer. Um, that means that I'm integrated in our development teams. Um, I code with them, and I try to help them that we uh, code secure software. So uh, I'm, I'm integrated there. I also give trainings there, help a bit with the awareness, and yeah, do some, some internal research. Um, and that's where, where this topic I will talk about today comes from. So I will uh, take you on a journey to the future of authentication, to passwordless authentication. And I just remembered that I forgot my presenter. <laughs> so let's add this. All right. Cool. So when we talk about the future of authentication, we need to have a look at the current state of authentication. And if I talk about authentication, I guess most of you will came up with, with something like, like this. So uh, username, password um, formula. Um, that's what, what we are used to since ever, <laughs> at least since, since I was born. Um, um, to authenticate uh, users. So we have the username, we have the password. And um, I guess all of you know the, the problems with these passwords. If we really need to uh, choose a strong password for each account we, we, are uh, uh, um, uh, we do the registration for, um, we, we need to memorize a lot of random strings. And that's nothing our brain, at least my brain, and I guess yours as well, um, is not, not made for. So especially with, with uh, the evolving of password policies, memorizing this longer and longer passwords, each unique for each account, is not possible. So uh, that's, that's why we invented password managers that reduces the problem a bit. Um, we come to that later. But nevertheless, there are people out there that are not able to memorize these passwords uh, all the time and um, they do not choose to um, use a password manager, but they reuse passwords, they choose easy passwords, passwords easy to remember, and these passwords tend to get stolen, tend to get leaked, or tend to just um, being guessed. So that's why we, we secured authentication with um, more than um, a password, a second factor. I don't know who of you were on the uh, TOTP talk today. We, we learned today that even this, this TOTP tokens are maybe not, not perfect, uh, but it is a common uh, mitigation um, to, to support users that chose um, insecure passwords um, that their accounts are not getting hacked immediately, but um, they get um, an OTP token via SMS um, um, for their um, log in or yeah, they use a, a TOTP in an authenticator app, something like that. But still, they need to memorize passwords, so they, they, we do not solve this problem at all, we, we just mitigate it. And of course, the, the problem of phishing is still, still remains, so even with, with a second factor, phishing is, is still an issue. Um, if, a, um, uses, um, if an attacker can provide me with some website, I'm, I'm sure that it is PayPal or whatever, and I um, enter my credentials there, then of course he also can um, trick me into enter my second factor there and uh, gain access to my, my account. So two factor is not, not solving uh, this problem. But some problems are uh, solved with password managers, so it's a good idea to, to use them. Then you only need to remember one password um, at best, uh, the password for your password manager. And if password managers are good and good integrated into your um, into your browser or whatever um, you're using um, on, on your mobile phone, um, it still can um, mitigate some phishing attacks because the password manager maybe notices no that is not PayPal you want to sign in. So um, yeah, then then um, this might get um, caught there. 
But still, we need to trust um, the user at the, the website that, that the passwords we enter there, and even if they are, I don't know, 100 um, characters long, and that they handle them correctly. And I do some um, code audits from, from time to time, and um, it's yeah, quite of terrifying how, how bad this topic is still handled uh, in, in existing software. So storing passwords securely, Sounds uh, manageable, but in, in fact, it is not. So um, if I g um, give some, some website my, my password, I need to trust that they know how to um, save this um, password securely. So what to do now? So we know passwords are not, not really a good thing. It's hard to remember them. It's hard to save them correctly. We can only mitigate some problems with them. So um, we, we try to um, yeah, go to, to other forms of authentication. And this is where the, the uh, famous three um, factors, um, three um, flavors of uh, authentication uh, come in. So something you know, you all know this is, is a password, for example. Something you have, something you possess is, for example, my, my um, mobile phone or some, some hardware token like a Yubi key or to be vendor neutral, a solo key or something like that. Um, or uh, something you are, um, biometric data, uh, your, your face for face ID, for example, or fingerprint or, um, yeah, whatever, whatever you, ch you chose there. Or, as some uh, funny person on the internet said, uh, three types, something you forgot, <laughs> something you lose, and something that is chopped off. So there's some truth in that as well. But um, yeah, these other factors, um, um, besides something you need to remember, and we, we saw that this is, uh, this is hard to do, um, so this possession-based or biometric fat factors, they um, yeah, have some capabilities of, of being more secure than, uh, and more uh, usable for, for the users um, than, than um, knowledge-based. So the solution um, that, that we want to come up with um, to, to replace the old passwords is we want to use this new forms of authentication, um, this possession-based or biometric um, factors, um, we want to use um, modern cryptography, um, public key cryptography. Um, so if we use some challenge response um, um, process there, then um, there's no need to share any secret directly. So there's no, no potential of, of leaking any, any secret. So that's a good idea. And what, what we saw with the password manager, if, if we really can check if the credentials are for this particular Side and and we get um, get to know or we, we are prohibited to um, enter the credentials on on phishing sites. This is also a good idea. And these are the main ideas of uh, Web of N. And uh, this is where um, the the future of authentication um, starts or started. I don't know. Web of N is is some years old. I don't know who already knows Web of N. Ah, okay. A bit. So we will have a look at uh, at what Web of N is, and then what what the new developments um, in this in this um, area are. So Web of N is um, uh, a protocol or more, uh, a JavaScript API that can be used to authenticate um, users without um, the the need for for passwords. And um, if we have a look at, at uh, quite simple architecture. We have some kind of, of server we want to authenticate to. Uh, in in WebAuthn, this is called a relying party. Um, we have our, our web application. So we are mainly looking at web applications uh, now here. We cover uh, mobile apps later. Um, this is running in a browser on some kind of, of platform operating system. And then we, we want to use um, authenticators that are possession-based or biometric. Um, so um, these can be um, um, uh, external authenticators as the security keys I just showed you, or they can also be internal authenticators so the platform could handle um, these uh, things um, itself. Um, for example, Windows Hello is, is doing this. Um, Mac OS is doing this with, with Touch ID as well. So this is um, um, the, the option that the platform handles, the, the authenticator part. And this part here is what is 
actually covered by, by WebAuthn. So how can we uh, standardize the, the communication between the relying party and the application browser platform stack uh, on, on, the, on the user side? Um, the right part, um, how to communicate with, with the authenticators, um, that's actually not WebAuthn, that's another protocol called CTAB. We will not cover this today. This is more yeah, how the, the technical communication between the platform and the authenticators work. And that's um, nothing the developer itself has to, has to deal with because um, to be very precise, WebAuthn is exactly at this part. So um, how can uh, the developer of a web application communicate with the underlying browser the application is running in to use this authenticators. And that's exactly what, what WebAuthn is doing. So it, it provides um, the, the developers with, with um, an API they can use to um, handle this um, credentials or these authenticators to, to create credentials. And in the end, WebAuthn consists um, only of um, two ceremonies, so they call it ceremonies, um, and this is basically all that WebAuthn uh, specifies. So it's one registration ceremony, and you, you can tell that that's for registration, uh, registering a, a new user, and an authentication ceremony for logging a user in. And what is actually happening um, in, in the registration ceremony that um, the, the, um, the web application is creating um, a public key pair, a private key, a public key, and um, for this particular relying party, and it is handing it over the, to, the, to the registration, um, uh, to the relying party. We will have a look at this later. And for authentication, it's only that the web application is checking that the user is really uh, in, in possession of this um, um, key pair, so of the, of the private key in this part. So this is done by a challenge response for, um, um, process. So um, the, the relying party is handing over a challenge and the um, user or the authenticator then uh, signs this and proves that it is really uh, in possession of this authenticator. But let's have a look at how this works uh, in practice before we dig uh, a bit into the, um, the underlying, underlying things. So we have a small web app here, quite, quite easy, uh, just, just a demo app. And we have a login uh, form here. And uh, you already noticed, I guess, that the um, password field is, is missing in this form. So this is uh, new. But before we can log in, we need to uh, register. So um, I enter my email address as, as a username. Let's see that I don't have any white spaces here. And for registration, I'm provided to, uh, I provide my, my name. So then we can see later that, that I'm actually authenticated. So what is happening now? I click on register. And what is happening now is that some, some pop-up is, is opening up. Uh, that's not from a web application. That's from uh, Chrome in this case. And I'm asked uh, on how to, uh, how I want to authenticate. Sorry, it's German, um, but I, I guess you, you, um, get the point. So, um, I'm, um, selecting USB key here and I'm need to be a bit faster because the timeout is running against me. So I'm uh, putting in my UB key now and I just tip it and the um, application says, registration uh, successful, and that's what, what's uh, done during the registration of a new user. So we can test this now if, if it actually worked. Uh, I need to remember my email address. I hope I get it right. Um, I entered this as a username in, in the login formula, and I click on authenticate again. A similar pop-up opens, my YubiKey starts to um, blink again, um, I can just tip it and I'm authenticated to, to my web app um, using this um, external authenticator without any uh, password or, or any um, knowledge-based um, credential. So that's what, what WebAuthn makes, makes possible. 
So let's have a look um, at how this is actually actually done. So we remember we have this application, the small web application we just saw. We have a relying party, some kind of uh, backend where we want to authenticate against. And what is actually happening in this registration ceremony? So that's. I hope you can can read it. Um, so the server and the client uh, talk to each other. Um, the client says, hey, I have this user here, Clemens. He wants to authenticate with this username. The server says, okay, cool. Then I need a public key from you. Um, the server can give some specification what um, um, protocols should be used, what is suitable here, um, what authenticators um, are allowed to use here. And the client takes this information and he calls this uh, JavaScript API. So that's basically all that is done in the, the web application on the client side. Um, we, we take the specification um, of the server and we uh, put it uh, into this uh, navigator credentials create API. And that's all that is done in, in um, the JavaScript um, web app itself. Then the browser takes over, he checks what credentials are available, he opens this pop-up, pop the user can select what credentials he wants to use, a platform authenticator, a cross-platform, an external authenticator. Um, these, um, the public key um, pair is um, generated on the uh, authenticator and um, gets back to the web app and the web app can take this public key, hand it over to the, the, to the server, and that's basically what the server stores in replacement for um, the password. So that's what the, the um, server knows about the, the um, credential that is uh, created. And when the user then later wants to authenticate, we saw this, I enter my, my username again. The client says to the, to the server, hey, I want to log in the user with this username. Then the server can check if um, a so, um, user is authenticated, but he does not have to, but he can hand over to, to the client some, uh, a list of, of suitable credentials. And then the um, client um, takes this, this information and um, the second um, API that is provided by WebAuthn is called, and that is this Navigator Credential Get API. So we have this uh, create and this get method, and this basically um, creates a signature on the challenge that is um, provided by, by the server, but that's um, as well handled by the browser, the platform, and the authenticator. So that's nothing the, the web developer itself or the, the web app um, needs to handle. It gets back the signature across with some, some additional information. This is passed over to the server. The server can check, is this signature matching the public key I know for this, users, uh, for this user? And um, if everything is fine, he um, can authenticate the user. The user is logged in and he can uh, go on in the application. So that's what, what WebAuthn provides. That's what, what the JavaScript uh, API provides and how it is uh, used in, in a web app, um, as we just saw. We, we saw it for, for um, Google Chrome on, on Linux here. Um, of course, every browser um, has some um, own um, yeah, user interface for that. That's something you need to remember if you want to give it to, um, to users. It looks a bit different um, on, on each browser, on each platform, because uh, the browsers need to uh, remain um, um, consistent with their, with their UI. But basically, um, what, what is happening uh, underneath is, is all the same for, for all browsers. And when I say all browsers, um, um, today, or when I checked last week, uh, we have um, more than 95% of users on the world is using, uh, are using a browser that uh, already supports um, WebAuthn. So um, Internet Explorer, I'm uh, happy we, we got rid of that uh, finally, or uh, hopefully. <laughs> um, um, is not supporting um, it. Firefox has some... Um, yeah, restrictions, um, let's not talk about that, but uh, most of the browsers, both on, on um, um, PC, uh, Mac, um, or um, Ubuntu, 
um, and also on, on the mobile um, platforms are supporting uh, WebAuthn right now. So this um, 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 WebAuthn API can be used in uh, web applications right now. And this is not, not very new. Um, the, the first working draft for, for this um, WebAuthn specification, it's actually a W3C um, specification. They started working on it uh, six years ago and the first um, public working draft was, was published then. And it, it got into a um, recommendation um, in, in March of uh, 2019. So that's when, when it actually became, became a standard. Um, some browsers uh, already implemented it um, before. Later, Apple joined Safari um, supported as, as well. We, we got level two of um, WebAuthn in um, uh, 2021 with some, some minor changes and that's what, what happened uh, in, in until um, last year, I would say. And before we, we have a look at what happened last year and why this might change uh, WebAuthn and its, its uh, usage, um, we need to have a look at, at what WebAuthn is actually and what it, what it can be. So what I showed you right now is the flavor of, of WebAuthn that is actually passwordless. So we have the user, he is identified by a username, and we use WebAuthn. I just showed you as um, the credential that that is um, authenticating this this user. Of course, you can also add a password field as you know it to to your uh, flow. Um, then you would use WebAuthn as um, a second factor, um, actually. So this is also possible. It's not not the basic idea of WebAuthn, but it is. Uh, it is possible to, to use it um, um, as, a, as a second factor um, if, um, if you like. And then there's a, a third flavor that's actually more advanced or more, more interesting, I think. Um, that's the ID-less um, WebAuthn. And um, instead of um, having this username plus WebAuthn, we want to get uh, rid of the username as well. So uh, we want to just use WebAuthn. So the question is how, how can we identify the user if we even do not even have a, a username of it? And uh, that requires that the authenticator itself, for example, the YubiKey or the, the platform authenticators the, the platform provides, um, keep um, the credentials um, in, in the authenticator in a way that they are discoverable for the application. So um, it, it is possible to actually store credentials, including the username on, on such a security key, and of course also in the platform authenticators, and then the, the website can just ask do you have any login for my relying party ID for my uh, domain, um, more or less? And um, we can, um, yeah, give them to the user to if there are multiple select and to log in. So then we do not even need um, um, a username anymore. But this requires resident keys, and for this hardware tokens, um, for this YubiKey 5, I think it is, you can only save uh, 25 of, of these resident keys uh, on it. Um, so I have a bit more uh, accounts than 25. You can also um, um, use it for, for this non-resident keys uh, a lot more, because then the keys are actually not, not uh, stored on the device, but they are um, derived every time you, you log in. But if you really want to use this ID-less um, WebAuthn and this uh, discoverable credentials, uh, you would um, yeah, um, run into some, some limits there. But this discoverable credentials um, are getting important uh, later, so let's, let's remember them. So it's possible to use WebAuthn even if we do not have a username just by asking the authenticator, um, do you have any credentials for, um, for my relying party um, um, here um, accessible? All right. So until last summer, I would say, it, there was quite a small number of applications that actually supported WebAuthn in, in this, uh, I would say, um, standard flavor um, of um, passwordless authentication. There were quite a lot of um, applications that integrated WebAuthn as a second factor. 
um, GitHub, I know, um, for example, and then they um, always publish here. Now we are supporting Web of N, but in most cases, they, that was only a second factor. Um, I'm only aware of two applications uh, until last summer that really um, allowed for um, passwordless uh, login, passwordless um, uh, Web of N. Um, at least, yeah, major, major applications. Keyclock, for example, supports passwordless authentication in, in its login flows. Um, also, I guess since last year or maybe even, even longer. So it would be possible, but a lot of applications, um, do not really go passwordless, um, so far. So the question is, why is this? We, we saw most of users are technically um, able to, to use um, WebAuthn. Um, it, it is supported in all major browsers, major platforms. There are solutions. Why is it not really um, adapted um, on the application side? And the main reason there, I would say, are the usability problems with, with WebAuthn. So, Passwords, as bad as they are, as we learned, um, they are known and they are understood. And um, even my grandmother can use password and she understands that she has to keep it secret. And in theory, she also understands that it should be complex. In practice, she's uh, even even less capable of memorizing complex passwords than, than we are. But it is a, a, a known concept and it is widely understood. Public key cryptography, on the other side, I don't know about your grandparents, is not that much understood. And um, if I would give my my grandparents um, a Yubi key, or maybe even my parents, um, they would not really understand how how to use it, or maybe how to use it, but they do not understand um, how to keep it secure, how to use it in in, in daily life. Uh, I mean, they can plug it in, but what what if they lose it they would not understand what what this means so this is something we already uh, also saw in, in in user studies we we did um um yeah um, with with potential users of, of web of n it's it's um raising a lot of questions how to use this authenticators how to um port um, um take over um different um accounts to to other um devices how is this uh, working so this is something that um people do not understand very good and that's that's the main reason here these external authenticators they are a bit difficult to understand if you really want to use them you need two of them you need to keep them in, in sync in case you you lose one of them you still need um, the other one and um, you can also use this this platform authenticators that are built in where basically the the platform the browser yeah, better the platform is is keeping these credentials but then they are just on your platform and it is not possible to um, log in on an, on another device so these problems um um yeah, happened with, with WebAuthn, and that was the reason why until uh, last year we, we did not really see a, a wide um, adoption um, in, in, uh, of usage of, of WebAuthn. And then, um, last summer, uh, this happened. Mm. Uh, both uh, Google and Apple uh, introduced something they uh, called uh, pass keys, and that's actually the next step of uh, passwordless authentication. And uh, that's what we want to have a look at in, in the second half of, of my talk. So, um, in, in, I think it was May and June, yeah, both uh, Google and Apple, not, not really coincidentally, um, uh, announced that they um, have something new um, for their users to authenticate, and um, this is what 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 pass keys are. So, what what are pass keys in comparison to WebAuthn? Um, you can say pass keys are uh, WebAuthn credentials. So, just as the, the credentials that are saved here or not saved on on my um, hardware token or that are saved on my platform, plus a lot. 
uh, of, of usability and integration. Um, and we want to have a look at, at uh, three topics um, here. So these pass keys are integrated into the, the ecosystem of, of um, Google, Apple, and, and Microsoft um, as well. We will see um, they are synced, so that's that's an important feature to um, maintain the availability and um, yeah the, the usage across um, devices. And they are also portable to other devices, um, even if um, they are not not synced. So let's have a look at what what this means um, in particular. So um, by adding this pass keys that are basically just these public key credentials uh, into their ecosystems. These uh, credentials get tied to your existing um, Google account or Apple ID or whatever you, you are maybe already uh, using. And this means that um, the existing uh, measures that, that um, are met to protect um, these um, these accounts, for example, um, the, the device log on Android phones to, to protect um, all credentials that are on, on Android or um, Face ID, Touch ID on, on iOS or macOS, these um, are then used to actually protect your uh, Web of N credentials. And unlucky, uh, this is not available on uh, Ubuntu so far, so I will not be able to demo this to you um, uh, in a live demo, but I can only show you um, how uh, Apple, uh, in this case, um, uh, demoed it last uh, summer. So um, they have this demo app here uh, on, on the left, um, also with a login screen that is just um, using um, a username field. And if you click into this username, um, 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 a pop-up um, appears. Uh, it's looking a bit different to, to the pop-up we, we saw um, in, in the old WebAuthn um, version, um, but we will come to this later. And it offers you the pass keys that you have already uh, saved for this, um, for this website uh, into your uh, Apple ID. And you can select it and then you get this uh, sweet little uh, image of a puppy. And um, the same on, on, on mobile apps, and that's what is also a, a big um, step forward. Um, before that, WebAuthn was mainly um, a web API, a JavaScript API. There were some libraries, adaptions for, for mobile apps as well, but now Google and Apple also uh, integrated it into, into Android and um, iOS uh, development. So um, even in, in some uh, iOS app, uh, you, you can use it in a similar way. If you click into the username field, um, the um, question if you want to use um, this credential pops up in, in this um, autocomplete bar um, of, your, of your iPhone uh, keyboard. And it is then um, unlocked with, with Face ID, while here it was unlocked um, using a Touch ID. So we have some kind of, of second factor here adding to, to the, the pass key that is, that is saved. And um, you can uh, log in there, there as well. So um, what they basically did is, um, except using some kind of external authenticator, this whole credential management is uh, built in into the um, Google, Apple, Microsoft account management, and you can register and um, manage your um, um, Web of N credentials um, there. So in the end, pass keys are Web of N credentials that are integrated and and, and synced. And we already saw this. Um, 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 a user interface that is um, different to what we saw in, in Google Chrome before. And uh, this is why, uh, um, because the, um, the new WebAuthn standard um, contains um, a feature that is called conditional mediation, or uh, they also call it conditional UI, or they also call it autofill UI, and then we actually understand what is, what is happening here. So as a web developer, um, you can um, add um, these, these autocomplete attributes to, to an input field. That's something that um, is already uh, happening. If you want to um, give the browsers a hint what, what to autocorrect 
uh, not autocorrect, autocomplete. Um, in a field, you can say it's a username, it's a password, maybe you do not want to autocomplete uh, at all, you can also specify that. And you can also um, use the new keyword web of n here. And this is actually um, triggering the website to uh, open this um, autocomplete um, um, uh, user interface that is then checking if there are discoverable credentials already existent for this um, um, relying party. And the big advantage of, of this, or there are two big advantage, uh, advantages. One is um, the website does not get any information if there are any pass keys available. So this is a privacy requirement that, that was um, fulfilled here. Um, the, the website just states this would be an auto, um, autocomplete web of n field and the browser takes over, displays the user um, if there are any pass keys or not. If the user selects a pass key, the website will, will know that, but if, if he does not, the website will never know if there are no credentials available or the user just didn't want to, to use them. So the user cannot uh, simply track if, if there are any pass keys um, available. That's, that's the privacy um, uh, thinking behind, behind this autofill UI. And the other reason for, um, for this is that it allows to um, use passwordless authentication um, beside normal authentication um, in, in a way that um, the browser can um, check if, if there are any credentials available here. And if not, he can just give it back this information to the browser, uh, to the to the web application. The web application can handle it, for example, then by displaying a registration um, field or a password field if you want to um, make uh, some some approach where you have um, both uh, available at at the same time. So this um, hands over the the decision if this is a passwordless login or not. Uh, to the browser who, who actually stores and manage the, the pass keys, the web of end credentials, um, while the, the web application then just gets the information if um, there are any pass keys available or the user did not show, uh, did not uh, want to, to provide them. So the next big thing with um, pass keys is that these web of n credentials are synced. And that's something that allows the users to um, yeah, reuse their uh, credentials even if um, it's, it's not um, some portable authenticator, but they are um, yeah, originally created um, on, on the device on, on the platform. Um, so for Google, um, they state that they are end-to-end um, -end encrypted um, in the quite new, I think, Google uh, Password Manager. Uh, for Apple, they are stored in, in the iCloud, also end-to-end uh, -end encrypted. And Microsoft, last time I checked, um, states that they are not assumed yet. So, but I'm I'm pretty sure that this will be something that that comes there as well. So the users can create um, the credential on uh, one device, um, on, on their MacBook, for example. The credentials are synced over um, the iCloud keychain and they can just um, log in on, on their iOS device um, in, in, the same, in the same way. This, of course, only um, applies to if you stay in the same ecosystem, so from macOS to iOS, it can be synced, but of course there will not be a sync between your Google Password Manager and the, the uh, iCloud uh, keychain. So uh, we also want to have um, a method to um, transport credentials between um, um, different, different platforms. And this is why um, the passkey uh, specification comes with um, a new feature to enable cross-device usage of, of pass keys. And um, this is actually something we can try to demo. Um, let's see. Um, 
Oh, it's quite slow. Yeah, I think um, that's the thing with live demos. Now let's uh, have a look at, at um, the prepared um, thing here. So what, um, how is this um, um, cross-device uh, usage of, of pass keys uh, solved? So um, let, let's stick to this slide for a moment, sorry. Um, there's an, an, a new protocol that allows um, to exchange um, credentials uh, between um, to devices, even if they are not synced through um, iCloud Keychain or the Google Password Manager. Um, more precise, to allow um, the uh, signature of the um, challenge between two devices. So you can imagine this as um, I want to log in on, on my phone in, in uh, uh, Google Chrome on, on Ubuntu and uh, on my iPhone I already um, registered a pass key for, for this account and I want to reuse this now. And what happens then is that um, in the same um, flow you, you just saw um, where we can um, use this um, YubiKey, we can um, open such um, QR code. And this QR code then allows to be uh, scanned with, with an iPhone and um, then the, um, the two devices uh, create some kind of, of tunnel to exchange this credential. So in the end, the iPhone is um, similar to what the, the authenticator, the, the YubiKey was, was before. So this is an extension of, of uh, this uh, CTAP protocol. So the iPhone is uh, functioning as an external authenticator, signing this uh, challenge that was um, um, provided in the in the Chrome browser um, on on the on the computer. And so let's finish this this GIF here. So uh, let's uh, start it again. So we sign in um, with with a pass key. We do not have a pass key. We want to use the one that is on our Android phone in this case. We scan this um, uh, QR code. This QR code contains um, the, the 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 challenge and also the um, um, some some security information for um, opening this this tunnel between the two devices. We scan this um, QR code on our phone. Um, it opens the um, um, yeah, pass key features. Um, we uh, need to identify here as well by, by our device unlock mechanism, biometric or PIN or whatever. And then the two devices communicate, they sign the, the challenge and um, we can um, get locked in on um, the, the um, computer. There are two security features that are interested, um, interesting here. Um, one is that um, it is required to perform some kind of proximity check between um, the, um, the both devices. So um, you want to avoid that this QR code is sent over via email to um, some um, um, victim. It scans it and then it um, provides some some authentication for for the attacker in some kind of passkey phishing attack. So um, to to avoid that, um, it is checked that the two devices are um, in proximity, and this is done um, using um, Bluetooth. So um, they um, advertise. Um, um, so the the initial after scanning the the QR code. Uh, they advertise uh, some information and um, check that the, the devices are really in uh, proximity. That means you need to have uh, Bluetooth on, on both devices, of course. That is some restriction here. And the other feature is that even if this uh, information is not done directly, so they thought about doing it directly via Bluetooth, but uh, sending information back and forth um, via devices is not, not that easy, so they just stick to this proximity um, check and the actually um, exchange um, of the CTAP um, um, information is done via a relay uh, server, but this is end-to-end uh, -end encrypted um, using um, information that is in, inside of this um, QR code. So these are the two um, security features that are interesting.
in this cross uh, device um, usage. So, if you now say, I'm a web developer, this sounds perfect, what should I do to integrate this into my, my own application? So, basically, um, I, I would say you, you can follow five, five steps. So, first, you need to extend your users. So, right now, your users are stored with some um, password hash. Um, next, you need to uh, save some um, public keys for, for the users. So uh, that's that's the first thing to just yeah technically enable your users to um, be um, authenticated um, with with pass keys. Second, you need to have some mechanism how to enroll existing users, how um, to enroll them to to pass keys. Um, so there are some feature detection mechanisms that can be used in in, in the web application to detect. Uh, when a user logs in, is this a platform that uh, supports uh, pass keys? If yes, then you can do this whole password uh, and pass key creation process and um, store these credentials. And then if you are brave, uh, you can just remove the passwords uh, as you go and um, the users can only uh, log in with, with um, the new pass keys uh, or you allow both for some time. So like, um, for new users, you, you need to do something similar. So they, they need to register with, um, an, a new, um, pass key information there. That's um, pretty straight, straightforward with, with the, um, API that are, that is available. And for the login itself, you saw this conditional UI, this autofill UI you can use to, um, allow the users to, um, log in with, um, pass keys if they have some. If not, you can fall back to your um, normal um, login flow as you uh, used before. And um, the fifth point that is uh, important is you, you need to provide some kind of management of this pass keys to the users. So the user should be able to see what pass keys are um, saved um, to my account. They should be able to, to add additional so uh, maybe they, they want to add um, uh, a, a second um, um, external authenticator in addition, or they say, I have uh, some devices in, in the Google ecosystem, some devices in, in the Apple ecosystem. I can do this cross-device uh, authentication every time, but um, you need to do it every time because it's just exchanging this um, the signature. So um, if you want to have a pass key in both ecosystems, the user should be able to to do so. And um, so you need some some um, um, yeah management options here that the user can add new pass keys, maybe also remove uh, older ones that are not used anymore. And um, that's that's a good idea. But this is only the the technical side, right? Um, Pass keys are more usable than uh, web of n, pure web of n, I would say, but uh, still the users, the users need to be guided on how to do so. Um, I'm pretty sure that now that Google, Apple, Microsoft um, are taking over um, and, and integrating it into their, their system, they will do some um, user education as well and other um, um, members of the Fido Alliance also started to, to add this. So PayPal is, is um, rolling out pass keys right now and then the users will get familiar with that. But of course, it's, it's also something, something new or something, um, um, that the users are not, um, familiar with. But, um, to summarize, the pass keys are, the next evolution step of, of Web of N. So they, they solve a lot of, um, stuff that is, um, that was a problem with, with Web of, Web of N. Of course, you can still, uh, try to use the original Web of N. So, um, you, you're not necessarily, um, required to store all your, um, pass keys, all your credentials, um, with Google or with Apple or with Microsoft. Um, but because syncing these credentials is something that was not initially intended when using some external authenticator. So the idea is the secrets in here never leave um, the, 
the key, but this has some um, usability problems. So with pass keys, it's some kind of trade-off between usability and security as so often. Um, and um, yeah, it, it tries to um, make it make it more usable. So the, the target audience, um, people that, that are able to use passwordless authentication um, gets gets bigger and, and broader. Um, I also mentioned this um, now it's not just uh, a web API anymore, but it's it's also um, included in, in, in the app um, ecosystem. So um, this allows for even smoother authentication between the different um, yeah, um, clients. So this is also a, an interesting um, part here. So if you want to learn more or if you just want to uh, try it out yourself, if you have um, uh, a modern phone, um, so with iOS 16, I think, Apple started um, supporting passkeys. You can already uh, try it out. There are some demos that are nice to just uh, check it out. Some others are uh, really detailed. You can see what, what is actually the, the cryptography uh, behind that. If you have uh, struggles clicking on these links uh, on your on your photos, uh, I will provide the, the slides later. Of course, uh, <laughs> that that would make it easier to to actually um, use it. So, uh, in the end, what what should you uh, take away from from my my talk today? Um, WebAuthn is a nice idea to finally get rid of passwords and to to make authentication. Um, and more secure in, in the web and pass keys are giving this, this whole idea a new momentum, I would say. And, um, yeah, I'm really, really excited how, how this, um, uh, continues, um, as it gets um, more accessible to a broader range of uh, people. But of course, we all, um, also have to, to mention that, um, you bound yourself to, um, this existing, um, oligopoly of, of the three, um, big, um, um, user, um, providers, if you, if you want. So, um, so the three platforms and, um, it is unclear how, how WebAuthn can remain, uh, independent, um, from, from this or if we are all forced to, to, um, use one of these platforms for authentication in, in the future. We, we will see there. But, uh, I want to end a bit more positively. Uh, passwordless future is near. So let's see how this uh, goes on in the future. Thank you very much. If you want to reach out to me, I will be here the evening tomorrow as well. Um, or you can just, um, yeah, um, contact me on, on Twitter or Mastodon um, or via email if you like. And I'm open to questions right now as well, of course. Yeah, please. So, so where are the specs for past keys? I don't think you need to say so. Um, there must be some shared spec between Google and Apple, right? As um, far as I understood it, it will be in the um, um, specification for level three of, of uh, WebAuthn. So um, actually, there are not that many things that really need to be specified. So this conditional UI is, is one thing um, that, that the, the protocol supports this conditional mediation. Um, and of course, this cross device uh, functionality with, with the QA code, but this is not part of WebAuthn. It's uh, extension of, of CTAP. So uh, this is uh, specified um, separately. Yeah. This. Well, will become part of Web, Web Authn, hopefully soon. Um, as far as I understood it, they, they will be part of, of it. So the part that needs to be specified. I mean, the rest is the concrete implementation, but yeah. Mm, no, I, so the question is, is if, if it's specified publicly, if, does it break this oligopoly? I don't think so, because um, if you register your, your pass keys with, with Google, you are bounding yourself to, to Google, and a lot of people will 
will do so because they already have their account of, of Google and it's it's convenient and 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 has a, a good usability. Maybe other um, um, solutions appear as well. I think some some password managers are thinking about building up some some similar system um, of of synced credentials. Um, I think one password is already doing so, but I'm not sure with that. It would be possible, um, but but the existing platforms and the existing uh, user accounts have a big um, advantage for for the for free platforms. I would say. Yeah. Thanks. Other question? Yeah. Does the dev guide task groups does that have like detailed information for developers and you know everything they need to put in, and also handle? There's obviously lots of different places they need to handle. There may be recovery flows they have to handle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good question. So, are the the dev um, the dev guides um, yeah um, sufficient for for um, developers to to actually implement it? Because you cannot just use the specification to to implement it in practice. So you you mentioned recovery flows. That's a very interesting topic because this is not covered by by WebAuthn at all. It's just authentication, uh, registration, and authentication and it's the same with passwords. You need to find a, a way, um, a process to to do so. There are some best practices, but I cannot recommend a specific um, a guide there. But um, for for pass keys, there in particular, there are some um, extensive uh, development guides. I think. Um, yeah, here yeah, this um, um, passkeys.dev uh, is the URL for that, and that's really helpful to actually uh, implement it and uh, get it into the, the the website. So the the web part is actually not not very complicated. So web of we saw it's just making these two calls on server side. You need to do the the checks of of the signature and all, all of that. You do not want to do this yourself. You can use a library for that. Um, and, and for pass keys with this conditional UI, you have some some more stuff, but this is all covered in this in this dev guide, and that's that's pretty helpful, I think. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think there are already websites where you can only log in via Facebook login or, or Google login and you do not have a, the, the option to create your own username password right now. That's not, not web of end, but there are websites right now that are already forcing you into having one account. Um, and yeah, it it might be possible that this um, gets even even stronger with with um, pass keys. I guess it depends on if there will be other solutions besides the the big platforms that that allow that. But yeah, it's it's not not said that this this works. Yeah, so I think purely from the security perspective. Um, it, it's fair to say that that I trust Apple more to handle my pass keys than some um, small shitty website I hand over my my password. But that's the two extremes, right? Um, beside that, this whole platform economic um, uh, thing remains, but that's beyond the pure security aspect, sure. Yeah. I think we are a bit over time. If there's one last question, otherwise, just grab me outside and let's discuss if, if there's more. Thank you very much.